I've taken electric wax melters apart in the past and I'm pretty sure the last one I took apart just had a fixed value resistor in it. So this is a different one. This is an earwig. I think it's a different one. Uh, have I taken one of these apart before? I don't think I have. I'm pretty sure the other one was a beige-ish coloured. And uh, so this thing comes with a little scratch and sniff pad which smells like chemical aroma as you might expect and it says great fragrance without a flame although that does depend on the voltage you use this on. I'm sure if the voltage was high enough, you'd get flames. Um, anything else worth mentioning? Does it come with any electrical specifications? Not really. Okay, let's open it. And then I can annoy my uh, co-workers by powering up an aroma device in the flat so the whole place stinks of chemicals. Ooh. Well, it comes with wax, that's quite handy. Yeah. So, does this give a power rating? Oh, it's got uh, data on the bottom. Made in China, 100, uh, oh, 110 to 240 volts, uh, 50, 60 hertz, 11 watts. That would suggest a uh, uh, positive temperature coefficient thermistor. This is where I need a power meter. I don't have a power meter here. What does the wax smell like? Does it smell remotely like what it was on the packaging? No, it doesn't. And right, so the scratch and the sniff has lied. This is just going to be warnings, isn't it? To clean advice. Yeah, lots and lots of warnings. Let's ignore them. Right, so let's open this up and see what's inside, what the construction is like. Uh, I need a suitable tool to open this because it looks like this is the main sort of anchoring device. So let's get the Leatherman into it. And before MD asks, it's a Leatherman core. I used to have a Leatherman wave, which I got in America, but um, over time I managed to snap blades by using it inappropriately. And I sent it in for a service and they just simply sent back a new Leatherman, which was quite nice. Uh, is that going to come out easily? Oh, oh, it's just come out. Mm. Let's uh, hoik this out. Is this going to come out? No, I think those screws might have to come out too. To reveal its little secrets, which aren't going to be terribly exciting. I'm going to guess it's going to be a glue gun style, positive temperature coefficient element sandwiched in a sort of metal frame. Could be wrong. Oh, right, okay, well, this side's come off. And the bottom's come off. Excellent, everything's come off. So we've got the mains come in. It goes to this switch, which presumably has an indicator on it because it has the three connections. It's a green switch. It will have a neon indicator in it, so it'll be green lit by orange, which never works that well. Oh, and here is the element. It looks quite neat, actually. Um. Oh, that, that must be threaded, and then they've locked it in with this nut. So that they've actually physically pushed the housing. Uh, hold on, let's get that out then. It will never go back properly. That's fine. I'm all right with that. So there's no earth wire going on to this, but it does have... Oh, that's not coming off. Oh, it has now. Oh, it had a thermal transfer compound. And a sheet of captain tape. Then it's got this little plastic frame. The thermal compound is very dry. It is just completely dried out. It's got that plastic frame. Is that going to come off? It's not willingly coming off. I think it might be hooked under at the ends. Let's uh get some more screwdriver bits into this. There's a very good chance at some point I'm going to lean forward so far that the skip of my hat blocks the camera view. My apologies if that happens. Oh right, yeah, this little plastic thing comes off. Now does that, the screw thread pushes down that, is that just cutting into the plastic? It feels like, I don't think there's anything hard in there, but it feels like high temperature plastic as you'd expect. And really, this is just um, 
it is just a, an aluminium channel that the PTC element has been pushed into and clamped solidly. It's not going to come out of that. I wonder if it's been pressed into that. Um, because uh, it doesn't look like it's going to slide out with ease. No, it's not. So that is pretty much sandwiched in. And interestingly, the captain tape has been sort of crimped at the end. So they've gone to great lengths to insulate this with the um, the usual captain tape layers. And it looks like they've put a couple of layers around the PTC element in there. Now, the PTC element inside that will be... Oh, it's actually printed. It's got the number printed on it as well. 110 degrees Celsius. And the date, 1610... 28. So the 28th day of October uh, 2016. That's quite interesting. But inside that, let's get, get the notepad in. Familiar notepad, familiar pen. My notepad travels with me everywhere. So what we've got here is end on, we've got this sort of aluminium sort of sleeve with the element inside. And usually the element is a little slab like that of the positive temperature coefficient compound with a metalized surface on this side and one on that side as well. And then the electrodes themselves, the connections, are usually just simply a metal plate that is sandwiched against that. And the characteristic of this material is that as it gets hotter, its resistance increases. So initially when you plug these in, the temperature, will, the current will flow will be quite high, the power rate will be quite high. But as it heats up, uh, that uh, current will drop and then it will get an equilibrium point where, or equilibrium point, where this plate will be maintained at a constant temperature, which will, oh, not for food, food use. That's not going to put me off using that for food use. But this uh, sits on, this will take the heat away. And as it takes the heat away, it will try to maintain that uh, equilibrium point by uh, varying the resistance of this. So it will just dissipate a fairly constant uh, power once it reaches that point. So um, they do seem to have made a bit of effort for the insulation, which you'd expect in a sort of typical UK compliant product. It's double insulated. It's got the solid plastic pin now. In the previous videos, I was mentioning that the uh, it's only products that re uh, need the proper earth connection. I'm looking around. Do I have a plug here that might have uh, a metal, all metal pin? Yes. Here's one. In the UK, a uh, plug should either have an all-metal pin, if it's a standard plug and it's got an earth connection, or if it's a double insulated product, it's perfectly acceptable to have an all-plastic pin. The dubious ones are the ones that are relying on the pin for an earth, but it's got the plastic sleeve. The sleeve should never be uh, on the metal pin. It should be metal all the way or plastic all the way for double insulated appliance. So they've got a proper uh, plug on. They've got the double insulation all the way here. They've got the fairly thick layer of captain tape around the device itself. Uh, then they've got this layer of uh, more captain tape at the back where it couples onto the uh, disc here. And then they've got that little plastic frame, which I've completely lost. There it is. That then provides another layer of insulation for the screw that is pressing the whole assembly onto the thermal plate. So it seems quite well made. Uh, I, so I shall, uh, I shall plug that in now and see just how much of a smell it makes and uh, whether it melts the wax properly. Some of these devices, uh, it, it's very dependent on ambient temperature, but it shouldn't be the case this one. On a very cold day or a cold house, it should still attempt to heat it up, but the, it has its limits. I think these will be designed to balance for an ambient temperature of about, say, a house at 20 degrees Celsius, probably, I'd guess, somewhere around about that. But it'll operate within a modest range either side of that. So yeah, it actually seems fairly well made, as you'd expect from an Airwick-type product. So that's it back together, and I have put a chunk of the wax in, just one. And uh, it's worth mentioning, that aside from the fact that the scratch and sniff really doesn't accurately correlate to the smell that's coming out of that, uh, it's worth mentioning that if you're quite impatient and you get the little vial, the little, well, vial, the little dish, and you put the wax in and you microwave it for one minute to boost it to save time, it's worth mentioning that after one minute the wax will have melted 
and there will be smoke coming off it and this will be very, very hot. So when you grab it out of the microwave and then attempt to rush across the room, there is a high possibility you're going to either burn your fingers or drop this. So uh, don't uh, microwave it. It probably says something about that in the instructions, but as you know, we didn't read those. So uh, yeah, this thing is full of this stinky wax now. I don't know what temperature this thing is. I, I should be able to get a temperature meter and measure that. And the indicator is uh, the green indicator with the orange neon behind it, which rather predictably looks orange in front of green plastic. So yes, uh, well it certainly works. Uh, I, I say it works. Uh, I haven't given it a natural test as I should have. This has been boosted in the microwave. Uh, I should also mention I didn't put this bit in the microwave. That would have been exciting. Uh, so, yes, and now this room smells like a brothel because it's not very big and this is clearly designed for larger rooms and also not to be microwaved. So, perhaps I'll turn this off now.